Hi, I'm Denshi, and I'm sorry that the web page didn't load correctly. I don't know what's wrong, but the Instant OS logo isn't really showing up. And as you can guess, in this video, I'm going to be talking again about Instant OS, and there's a reason for this. So let me just open up my uh, desktop folder. The video rank little image that I have over here, it details the ranking of the videos that I've most re recently released, and not really, but the, the recent seven days of video views. And the most viewed one by far has been the Instant OS Manjaro based minimal distro video. The reason I want to follow this video up is because there's been two more betas released of Instant OS, and believe it or not, it's not even based off Manjaro anymore. It's based off Arch, and I want to show it off, and I want to show off a couple of cool things that Paper Benny the developer has added, and various things. The web page is still generally unchanged from before, there's been a few UI changes, and uh, there's more information about it, for example, there you go, it just says Arch-based distro is no longer Manjaro-based, but the beta trailer still says it's Manjaro-based, so th that might need some updating. Uh, you know, all the various things. Uh, I guess I'll just go directly to a VirtualBox and show it off. So let me just open up uh, VirtualBox over here, as you can see it's based off Arch. I'll make that a uh, full screen real quick. And we can boot Arch Linux, and then it will boot us into the graphical environment of InstantOS, which I have been informed correctly. I knew this before I made the original video, but I just got it wrong for some reason. Is Instant Window Manager, which is a fork of Suckless's DWM, which is a very, very minimalist window manager, and a very, very good one as well. Very customizable. However, uh, as uh, Paper Benny notes on the website, I think you can go over here, I think it's about and you'll check Suckless is not a Suckless distro. Instant WM, Instant Lock, and Instant Menu started out as Suckless forks, but contain less than 40% original Suckless code. So they're so heavily modified, uh, they're basically not even that anymore. It's sort of like, I don't know, Ubuntu and Debian. Virtual Machine Detected, this is a great feature as well that's been added. Now you can automatically get high resolutions on virtual machines when automatically detected. Not even Ubuntu has this, I believe. You gotta go there and change it as if it was a regular computer. Uh, I guess I'll make this uh, full screen, so you, this all just makes much more sense, there we go. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is the fact that now, you didn't really catch that, but the the windows are animated, so, I don't know, um, you know, this window over here, I can move this around. If I open up the application menu, and open something like, I don't know, let's say, um, uh, Xterm, open up Xterm, it, it animates, as you can, as you can see. I'll quickly, uh, I believe it's Control C to close things, or Control Meta C to close things, or I believe there's a specific command, maybe Control Shift C. There is a specific command to close windows, but anyway, if you open a bash over here, this is just a terminal. I believe you can scroll, but I don't know all the key bindings yet. Anyway, so that's a thing that they've added. You can now, for example, let's say I open up a window, since this is a window manager after all. Uh, I'm gonna open up a window, like for example, um, yeah, Pavu Control, there I go, that thing, that will open up, and then I can open up something like, uh, maybe if it wants to actually open up, there you go, uh, I'm gonna open up something like uh, URXVT, and it doesn't open, I don't know why. There's the, the, there's two file managers here, there's Nautilus, so you can open this up and it will open up Nautilus, there you go, Nautilus. And there's also so there's Nautilus and this, and you can also have, if you feel like Nautilus is a little bloated, you can uninstall Nautilus, and you can maybe if the application menu opens, I don't know, I think there's something wrong with my virtual machine because this should work perfectly well on real hardware. Let's say I could, I want, I can use what's it called, Ranger, Ranger File Manager, which I think is written in Python. As you can see, the windows themselves animated, so. This Nautilus window kind of squeezed over to that side. Um, I've never seen animation like this in a window manager before. And that's very, very nice. I really do like that. And uh, Instant Window Manager, while well, it is obviously still in a beta, I don't even know all the key bindings yet. You can see them on the website. There's some really comprehensive guides. So this is, um, as you can see, the um, Ranger File Manager written in Python. I guess you could install NNN if you like that one better. And yeah, so there's that. Uh, there's just general, uh, you know, shortcuts things and terminal there you go as you can see that they're animated which I really like and then if you want to move things you hold down the meta key or the super key and you can grab windows and they detach that's pretty cool so I don't know let's do a nice uh, is yay installed in the system yes it is that's very very good I love how the little terminal shows what program you're running I think that's a feature of um, I'm not sure what shell it is. I think it's, it says here, it's. I think it's bash, but it's some extra plugin. I like that for the terminal emulator. It's pretty smart. 
Uh, the mirrors are obviously quite slow, so I'm not going to actually update the system. But, you know, it's pretty cool. Speaking of updating the system, let me close this. There's Instant as well. They have that as a repository just for all the various Instant things. Speaking of that... Wait, I'm just going to clear this. Uh, I think it's uh, Control-C, maybe Windows-C. That's, that's to close, I believe. Is it? Or to change arrangement? Oh, I'm opening my own. I can close things like that. I know there's a way to close things pretty clearly. But anyway, no. I want to talk about something else that's pretty cool in the system. I'll just open up a different window. It's the installer. It's a new installer that there is. So this little shortcut, maybe if I can close this application. I don't know. It's I still don't know all the bindings. It's all annoying. But if you click on the installer, uh, it will open up here, I believe. Somewhere. There. Maybe. I don't know. There it is. So something appears to have gone wrong. Uh-oh. <laughs> that's not good. Um, maybe it's what we did before. I hope I can show off that installer. It's quite good. I like the installer. Um, I want to be able to specifically close the... Let me just wipe that off. Close everything else and then open the installer because I really want to show the installer. God, this video is <laughs> going horribly. Uh, let's see. Documentation. Guess we could check that. Is that opening? I think it uses a web browser or something. I don't know. Key bindings. There you go. That's useful. Temp hotkeys. Internal server error. I think something's going genuinely wrong with the system. Uh, whoops. Probably my fault. Virtual machine and such. But you get the idea. I'll just quickly restart the virtual machine. So here we are booting back into the machine. It should, uh, you know, boot now. There we go. Once again, this is probably my fault for doing something stupid. Whether it be pressing something I didn't need to press or running a command. It was probably that EA command that messed things up. There we are. Instant window manager is opening. There we go. And uh, it should uh, change to 1080p. It will ask me to do that. There you go. So you'll notice that there's these little text menus. That's what's used in the installer. So now if I'll quickly open up the installer by clicking this button over here. Install Instant OS. Beginning installation. It'll open up this terminal window and it will give me a graphical user interface as well. There we go. Something appears to have gone wrong. Uh oh, that's not good. Bash line 1500, command not found. Hmm. I think it was because we tried to update the system. That shouldn't happen because everything should be working. But you get the idea. The installer is all text based now. The, the thing I'm trying to get, get, get across is the fact that they don't use the Calamari's installer anymore, which is what was used before. I personally think the Calamari's installer is okay, like, um, because you're not really going to be installing the Calamari's installer itself. You can customize what the Calamari's installer installs, so it's not like you're going to have a more bloated system because you're using the Calamari's installer. I guess writing your own installer has its own benefits to some extent, but I feel like it's sort of unnecessary, and I would have preferred for this system to come with the Calamari's installer, mostly because if it's supposed to be intuitive, it's better to use the most intuitive installer there is, which is the Calamari's installer, which can handle partitions really, really easily. And I'm pretty sure, last I tried this installer before, and it doesn't really give you an option to, I think you can do it if you go to the advanced settings, but it doesn't really give you an option to specify which partition you want the EFI, like, uh, you know, bootloader to be installed to, which partition you want this. It, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's sort of, how do I explain this? It's it's very clearly incomplete, at least it, it appears to be, I'm not sure. I probably might have missed something. But I would have preferred the Calamari's installer. I feel like having this own little custom installer is sort of unnecessary, but you know, that's just my thoughts. Um, the fact that it's based off Arch as well, that's a great thing. It means that now uh, you're probably going to have more updated repositories, you know, that's pretty good. And more specifically, it's less bloated because Manjaro itself is a relatively bloated system when it comes to just being Manjaro. It, it has, um, I know when you're even doing a base install, it does install various things that you probably don't need. And it, it also has different commands. It has like uh, different types of commands. So for example, let's open up uh, terminal. Like I think it's UX term is the default one. I'm not sure. Okay, it's definitely not. But um, something like in Manjaro, you don't do gen fstab. You do uh, fstab gen, which obviously isn't here, which is confusing to new users. So it's good. To, it's good to know that you know gen fstab is in here because it's an Arch-based system. But th same for other functions that you would have in the Arch installer and other things that Manjaro has that are weird. The Pamac package manager, especially, 
is uh, just generally very, it feels user friendly to some extent, but it, it doesn't really use many shortcuts. You have to, to type out a PAMAC update program, program like a command. So it's sudo PAMAC upgrade, right? When on Arch, you do sudo pacman minus, well, minus or dash capital S, and you can customize things. With PAMAC, it's just generally not as good. So that's why I don't like distributions being based off Manjaro and basing something off a, a base thing, basing, basing something off something that is based off something else is generally bad when it comes to this kind of stuff. I'd rather, if I had to make a distribution, I'd probably base it off Arch or Debian or the core distribution with the main package manager and that kind of stuff because it makes things generally easier and more understandable and more specifically it means it means you have to worry about less things it makes things less complicated and art itself is about that kiss ideology keep it simple and stupid which is very very good so uh, yeah that's my look at instant os the animated windows the fact that it's based off arch and the new installer i believe are the biggest things and the fact that it automatically detects virtual machines but then again like you're supposed to install this kind of stuff on real hardware, I'm assuming that's the target demographic, not a bunch of people running it on virtual machines, although it does run pretty well. And, you know, it's all smooth and stuff. So, uh, thanks for watching the video. Um, goodbye.